Welcome back to a new episode of Animal of the Week. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the Olm. Though this may look like a species of worm or a messed up snake, it's actually a species of salamander. Interestingly, in the 1600s when they were first discovered, they were thought to be the offspring of dragons. It is a member of the family Protidae, a family of aquatic salamanders characterised by the fact that unlike most salamanders, all the members of this family don't lose their gills when they mature from their larval stage. Their genus, Proteus, is not a large genus, with the Ulm being the only member of said genus, and it is also the only European member of the family Protidae, with all the other species dwelling in North America, and some are extinct fossil species. The Ulm is a cave-dwelling amphibian and enjoys the dark secluded waters of the underground. They are found in the Balkans on the coastal regions of the Adriatic, from Slovenia to Montenegro. They have lived in these caves for almost 20 million years, which has allowed them to become well adapted to the environment of complete darkness. The caves were formed when the dolomite limestone of the area was carved out by water eroding the soluble rock. The waters stay at around 5 to 15 degrees centigrade, making them really quite cold, and they require the purest of water to survive, meaning they can be dangerously susceptible to water pollution. Within the caves, they tend to dwell near the bottom, hiding amongst the sediment and small cracks in the rocks. Living in secluded caves doesn't give the most amount of options when it comes to feeding, but the Ulm has learnt to adapt to this. Amazingly, the Ulm is able to somehow survive up to a decade without feeding. Obviously, the Ulm would rather not have to wait a decade to eat, and the only time it was proven they can live without food for a decade was under lab conditions in an experiment, so in the wild it might be less time. However, it's still remarkable. The way it does this is by being able to swallow its prey completely whole and in vast quantities when it can, and then store the nutrients as lipids in its liver while at the same time slowing its metabolism to a crawl. If desperate enough, it can also digest itself, reabsorbing its own tissue to last slightly longer. When the Ulm does feed, it eats detritus as well as any small invertebrates it can find, like snails. The problem with Ulms is that they can live for over a hundred years, which may sound amazing, but it means that their reproductive cycles are very slow. They don't reach sexual maturity until they are 12 years old, meaning there is a lot of time for them to die before being able to reproduce, which has helped cause them to become vulnerable. The interesting thing about the Ulm is that they can be oviparous or ovoviviparous depending upon the situation. If they decide to be oviparous and lay eggs, around 70 individual eggs will be produced and deposited, usually on the underside of rocks. However, they might decide to be ovoviviparous and keep their eggs inside of them. Them until they hatch. In these cases, usually only two individuals will be born due to the lack of space, however they have the advantage of being fully formed when born, and so often fare better as they won't be eaten as eggs. There is a clear trade-off between the two methods, but different situations could be better for one method or the other, and it's a good thing the Ulm can choose. The Ulm clearly has many weird and wonderful adaptations that I've already mentioned. Their breeding abilities, their amazing starvation prevention, and their extreme longevity living to over a hundred years, and also how they retain their gills into adulthood. However, they still have even more to look at. Firstly, their eyes, or rather, their lack of eyes. As they live in complete darkness, they have evolved not to need eyes, and so they've reduced in size and become useless. However, this has meant that other senses have become heightened and very effective. Its senses of smell, and hearing are superb and allow it to effectively hunt for prey. Its whitish, yellowish, pinkish skin colour is due to the fact that it doesn't require any melanin to protect it from the sun, however it still retains the ability to produce melanin if it ever got to the surface and needed to. They have actually been observed becoming much darker when they touch sunlight. The red frills you see on its head are the gills that it retains from its juvenile stage. When an animal retains juvenile characteristics into adulthood, it's called neoteny. The Ulm has adapted to its environment so well that it's very vulnerable to even small changes in their cave habitats. That has made them vulnerable to human activities. Pollution is perhaps the greatest threat, as even the smallest amount of pollution, such as pesticides, seep into the water table, then the Ulm may become sick or die. The only plus side is that they lack any natural predators, as they're the top of the food chain in their cave environments. 
Olms have been kept in zoos, however, and attempts at breeding programs have been made, but with varying success. As of now, they are officially classed as vulnerable, with their population still sadly declining. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.